Greetings, everybody. So in this video, we're going to discuss about a newly developed tool for nonlinear analysis, which is called the density color bifurcation diagrams. Now, of course, uh, everybody knows about the bifurcation diagrams. Uh, this new tool is a modification of the bifurcation diagram. It was developed in a recent paper by our own research group. Uh, it was published in the International Journal of Bifurcation and Chaos. I'm going to put a link to the description of the video, both for the paper and also for the MATLAB code to compute this diagram. Okay, so you're going to find all the information available in the description. Now, of course, everybody knows about the bifurcation diagram, right? It's a very well-known uh, graph used in nonlinear analysis. And what it does is basically, let me remind everybody, it depicts uh, the dynamical behavior of the map as we change one specific parameter value. So this is, for example, the classic bifurcation diagram for the logistic map. Uh, let's move uh, my camera for a bit. And you know how this graph uh, behaves and what it represents. For example, for different values of this parameter, it shows us, for example, for R equals 2, it shows us that the system has a period 1 behavior. For R equals 3 point something, it shows us that we have a period 2 behavior. And this is why we have two dots in the bifurcation diagram. Uh, for around 3.5, we have one, two, three, four dots in the bifurcation diagram, and this indicates that we have a period four behavior. While for all the other areas that you see right here that are very, very dense, so they have many points, uh, this indicates, for example, uh, that the behavior doesn't have any specific pattern, or as we said, it's chaotic, right? So for R equals four, for example, a classic parameter, a value for the logistic map, the bifurcation diagram shows a chaotic behavior, and hence, uh, why we have this uh, this region of dense points, right? So a very well-known diagram. This appears in every book or paper about uh, discrete time chaotic systems. So you pick any random paper in the literature that has some sort of chaotic uh, uh, system, a chaotic map, and analyzes it, 100% chances it's going to have a bifurcation diagram included. And the same holds for any uh, book that you read uh, on uh, chaotic systems in discrete time. Okay, so it's a very classic diagram. It shows us a lot of information. For example, it shows us how the behavior of the system changes as we increase or maybe decrease a specific parameter. Okay, So our thought here uh, for our paper was how can we <clears throat> improve upon this diagram uh, to make it you know, able to show more information about the dynamical system? So OK, let's zoom in on the logistic map for the range uh, from 3 to 4. Now, we can see the transitions in and out of chaos. All right, we have the period doubling root, for example, and then we have some crisis phenomena. But what this graph doesn't show us is uh, what is the statistical distribution of this map. So as you will see later, uh, as we change the parameter value of this map, and of course, we obtain a time series, this time series may be periodic or maybe chaotic. Uh, but in any case, we cannot know, uh, of course, in the case of period, we know, but in chaotic, uh, the chaotic regime, we don't know how the values are distributed uh, for this time series. Uh, in other words, we need to separately compute the histogram uh, for this time series in order to obtain uh, this information about the statistical behavior of the system. So we thought, OK, can we uh, somehow uh, you know, modify this diagram to show this sort of information? And that's what we did in the paper. So what we did is create a very easy to understand algorithm. And I, as I said, I have a code for MATLAB in the description where we take this bifurcation diagram and we color code it okay, based on the statistical distribution of the map for each individual value of the parameter. So what you see right here is the density colored bifurcation diagram. Okay? And for this diagram, what we do is choose a range of statistical values. Uh, you know, the whole interval is from 0% when a specific range doesn't have any values of the map to 100%, uh, where the range, uh, when this specific bar in the histogram has all the values of the map, as it happens in, uh, you know, uh, periodic behavior. Here we choose 0% to 0.5% or higher. And we chose that, this is a tunable parameter, but it makes the graph look very, very cool. And immediately, what do we see here? Uh, let me explain. These different colors that you see in the default uh, MATLAB color uh, scheme that goes from deep blue to uh, green and then yellow represent 
the statistical distribution for, for this specific uh, small area uh, in the graph. So for example, let's see the obvious case, uh, in this range where we have periodic behavior, you see that these points are colored completely yellow. So the distribution here is over 0.5%. Obviously, because uh, for this range of values, <clears throat> The system is periodic, so obviously 50% of the values lie in this point and 50% lie in this point. <clears throat> On the other hand, in the regions of the chaotic regime, you see that uh, there are some regions that are higher colored. For example, from all of these frames right, right here, if you uh, follow my mouse, you see that on the edges of the bifurcation diagram, on this top point and this lower point right here, you have a higher color. It's very close to yellow. This means that if I take the time series for uh, this spe any specific uh, parameter value right here, and let's say I compute like 1,000 or 10,000 values of the time series, and I take the histogram, the edges of the histogram, uh, you know, have more values in them, which means that the time series have more values distributed on the uh, edges of the mapping interval. And do you also observe some intermediate points in some papers, for example, these are called, uh, I think they are called skeleton bifurcations. And you see that in between, there are some values that have a higher distribution. So immediately understand that uh, there are some regions that are not uniformly, you know, the time series is not uniformly distributed, right? On the other hand, there are other regions, uh, for example, for R equals four, that are a bit more uniformly distributed, right? So I will actually show you this behavior uh, using some histograms. So let's see. Again, I have the uh, density color diagram. <clears throat> and for example, let's use the parameter value uh, 3.7. Okay, so for this value R equals 3.7, I compute, I think, 10,000 values of the time series, and then I compute the histogram. And that's the histogram right here. It's, it's, it is colored in the same uh, color scheme. And see that. You see that in this bifurcation diagram, the values around uh, this point, 0 0.3, are very, very uh, high colored, yellow. And again, on the other edge, they are also higher yellow, uh, higher yellow points. Uh, this means, obviously, that the histogram has more values distributed on the edges of the mapping interval. And of course, you see that in between, around 0 0.7, there are a couple more regions that are uh, much higher colored, closer to green or yellow. Again. These are points in the mapping interval that have a higher distribution of values. On the other hand, uh, this point right here, around 0 0.4, has a deeper color. Around, you know, it's used very deep blue. This means that, uh, according to this color bar, it will have less values distributed in that interval. And this gets verified by the histogram for this time series. So you see, around the edges, 0 0.9 and 0 0.3, you have some peaks, right? Around 0 0.7, you also have some peaks, while also around 0 0.35 and 0 0.4, uh, where we have deep blue, we have lower histogram uh, values. So you see how useful this uh, diagram is. Without having to compute the histogram separately, by looking at the color pattern, I can immediately understand that there are some values of higher distribution and some regions, I'm sorry, not values, some regions of higher distribution and some other regions of lower distribution of values. So I immediately get statistical information about the logistic map. Let me show you another example. Let's go uh, towards the parameter k equals 4. And for this parameter, uh, on the edge right here, you see that, you know, close to 0 and close to 1, I have some yellow points. So on the edges, I'm going to have a high distribution of values. And on the rest of this interval, um, very close to deep blue. And so the indication here is that probably the histogram is going to look like horns. So I'm going to have a lot of values on the edges, but very few values in the middle. And indeed, I compute around 10,000 values for the time series. And you will see this behavior right here. On the edges, I have a distribution that goes much above 0.5%. Actually, it goes around uh, 30 or so. I'm not entirely sure, I don't remember. But in the middle of the interval, the values are very, very, very low. So immediately, as I told you, I can obtain statistical information about the behavior of the logistic map. Okay, so this is the diagram that we proposed in our recent paper. 
And I'm going to show you a couple more examples, uh, but let's actually see this graph in a different way uh, in MATLAB. <clears throat> so let me go in MATLAB and plot this diagram. I think I have it right here. So in, it's going to look amazing uh, how I'm going to show you. So let me zoom in. So this is the density colored bifurcation diagram. So let's actually do something very, very cool. Uh, I'm going to rotate this in 3D so you can actually see the statistical distribution. So I'm going to rotate the graph and see what happens. If I rotate it in 3D, you will immediately see how the values are uh, distributed uh, are like that. Okay, so the z-axis here is the statistical distribution of the logistic map for different parameter values. Uh, so obviously in the periodic regions, uh, the statistic distribution is only between a couple of points, so the percentage is very, very high. But on the other regions that you see right here, see how amazing this looks. We can actually observe uh, different regions, regions of higher peaks, which means that if I take the time series for this specific parameter value, these specific points have a much higher distribution. So the time series ends up going again and again much more often in these uh, smaller regions. So this is an amazing graph, right? I think it is very, very cool how it looks. It gives us a very nice idea of uh, specific peaks in the parameter range that have a much higher statistical distribution. So these are much more common, as you can see, in the edges, right? And in between, there are a couple more values of higher, higher peaks, right? Uh, so I think this is uh, basically uh, a 3D version of the density colored bifurcation diagram. And I think it looks amazing. And we immediately obtain a lot of visual information about the statistical behavior of them. Very nice. And I'm going to give you one more example. So let's go towards uh, this uh, another example here. This is again from our paper. Uh, this is another map. It's a piecewise map. I'm not plotting uh, the mathematical formula. Like we'll find it in the paper. And this is the bifurcation diagram for this specific piecewise map. <clears throat> and what do you observe immediately? I mean, even from the simple bifurcation diagram, you will see that the distribution changes as the parameter increases. So for lower values of the parameter, you see that we have a lot, a lot of values of the map closer to 0 0.1, while for higher values, uh, you know, it, there is a shift in the values of the map, and more of them fall in this interval that is closer to 0 0.9 and 1, right? This is somewhat obvious from the bifurcation diagram, but if I get the density colored bifurcation diagram, this is extremely obvious, right? So again, I'm plotting the statistical distribution, and you see that for lower parameter values, <clears throat> we have denser regions closer to 0, while for higher parameter values, I have denser regions closer to 1, right? So immediately I obtain statistical information from the density colored bifurcation diagram. And I can actually verify that with a couple of, uh, of histograms. So let's try out the value for parameter kappa equals 0 0.1. So I compute 10,000 values of the time series and I take this histogram. And obviously you can see that, right? For values closer to one, uh, I have a higher distribution, and you can see that. While for uh, values closer to, I'm sorry, 0 0.1, and for values closer to one, I have a very low number uh, of uh, values in the time series. So this is the histogram, and as you can understand, it is left skewed, right? I obtain this information by looking at the diagram. And again, correspondingly, if we go to the other side of the bifurcation diagram, around 0 0.9, you can see the exact opposite behavior. For values closer to 0, we have a very low distribution, while for values closer to 0 0.9 and 1, we have a much higher distribution, right? <clears throat> so the histogram here is right skewed. And you can understand that due to the fact that we have light, lighter colored regions uh, on this region, and on this region, we have much, much darker colored regions. This is a great map example because as you can obviously see the change in the statistical behavior of the map as the parameter kappa increases, right? And I'm going to show you the 3D version of this map as well. So I have my code here. Let's plot. 
the density color bifurcation diagram. And again, let's rotate it in the 3D range so you can see the statistical behavior of the map. So we rotate it. And then as I move to the 3D, you can immediately uh, see the different uh, statistical distributions. So basically, this is a very, very big 3D histogram. Uh, but the range is from 0 to 100. And in this case, the map is much more uniformly distributed compared to the logistic map. So if I plot it from 0 to 100, it's not very obvious. So let's make the interval a little bit slow, a little bit lower. I'm going to change the map, let's say from 0 to 1%. Okay, so this is going to make the distribution a bit more obvious. Okay, so with this change, again, let's see. This is the original bifurcation diagram. And let's rotate it and in the 3D. And you can immediately see the behavior that we showed earlier. So for lower values of the parameter kappa, the map's time series is distributed unevenly and it is closer to lower values around 0 0.1, 0 0.2. While for higher parameter values of kappa, uh, <clears throat> the time series is again distributed unevenly, but more values are closer to the region around 0 0.8 and 1, right? So you can immediately observe through this diagram, and especially in 3D, I believe it looks amazing. I think you will agree as well. You can observe the changes in the statistical behavior of the map. Okay. So this is the idea behind uh, the density color bifurcation diagrams. Okay. I believe it is a great graph. It's going to offer a lot more information for those studying chaotic dynamics in discrete time. So as I said, any question, of course, that you have regarding this behavior, you can plot, you can write it down in the comments. And in the description of the video, you will find uh, a link, of course, to the original paper in the International Journal of Bifurcation and Chaos. And of course, a MATLAB code. And you can try this out after you read the paper, of course, to learn about the details of the map and the, you know, of the algorithm. It is a very short algorithm, so you will not have no problem understanding it. And you can try it out in your own systems as well. Okay, so thank you very much, and we'll see you uh, in the next video.